Welcome back, my beautiful friends. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York, iHeartRadio. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Up in just a few minutes in our Millennial Mom segment brought to you by OGPay.com, we're featuring the amazing Kirsten Chernek, a dedicated wife of 14 years to Thomas and a mom to Mia, Kai, and Aria. They adopted biological siblings, Mia and Kai, from foster care, and their youngest daughter, Aria, has Down syndrome. They're currently in the process of adopting another baby with Down syndrome and are looking forward to growing their beautiful family. Kirsten loves advocating for adoption, foster care, and Down syndrome awareness through her community and her social media, which is where I found her. Now, let's review. People with Down syndrome have an extra chromosome. The nucleus of a typical cell contains 23 pairs of chromosomes, 46 total. Each of these chromosomes determines something about you, from your hair color to your sex to all those little details. People with Down syndrome have an extra copy or what we call a partial copy of chromosome 21. Each year, about 6,000 babies are born with Down syndrome in the United States, and the numbers are escalating. It's the most common chromosomal disorder in America. Today, we're chatting disability awareness, Down syndrome advocacy, and demystifying the stigmas. Welcome to the show, Stunner. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much for for coming on. I mean, it's fantastic. I love your social media page. Your kids are absolutely beautiful. And you are like, you're going to get the mom of the year award. Oh, thank you. That is so kind. I really appreciate it. I definitely love being a mom. It's my greatest honor. Well, talk to me about what that actually is and feels like uh, in your situation. So clearly you found out about Down syndrome in in probably a natal screening and decided to keep your baby. Talk to me about this decision and what was that like? Yeah, so I actually had a great experience in terms of when I was told about Aria's diagnosis and her having Down syndrome, um, my OB was phenomenal and was actually really encouraging to me. He did say like, you know, this is going to make life a little bit harder and there are going to be some things that you're going to have to overcome with her. Um, but he was amazing in how he presented the information to me, um, for us, um, not keeping her was not an option. We absolutely knew, um, that we wanted to have her and it took time to process for sure. I did not know a ton about Down syndrome, so I wasn't super educated, but it was one of those things that the more I started to research and find out about and hear from people's experiences, the better I felt about it. And by the time she was born, I just knew she was always supposed to be the one for me. It's such a beautiful story. And she looks exactly like you, by the way. Oh, thank you. Beautiful little girl. Beautiful little girl. Really, truly. Now, how are the other children adjusting to Aria? And what made you decide to adopt a third child? But this time, specifically, you want to adopt a child with Down syndrome. Talk to me about that. Yeah. So that was probably my greatest apprehension when I got her diagnosis was how it was going to affect Mia and Kai. Um, And I, the second I brought her home and they were playing and interacting with her, it just, all of those fears melted away. I just saw how much they loved her, how much they didn't even see a diagnosis, even though we tried to explain it to them at the time they were three and two years old. And so um, now seeing who they are together, like the three of them, they were always meant to be. Mia and Kai are phenomenal with her. She is so great with them. She looks up to them. They are her role models. And she just allows them to have so much fun and just like bring so much silliness and joy to our lives. And so they get to experience that on a daily basis. And so in terms of adoption and our family growing, moving forward. So like you mentioned, we adopted Mia and Kai. That is how we decided to start our family. We adopted them from foster care. Then we had this amazing experience with having this beautiful child with Down syndrome opening our eyes to this amazing, phenomenal community that we just weren't aware of before. And when we were thinking and praying about, you know, continuing to grow our family, we just started having the conversation of what would it look like to adopt a child with Down syndrome? And so I started doing some research and found out there's actually an organization specific to that here in the States. It's called the National Down Syndrome Adoptive Network. And they handle all of the adoptions when you're adopting a child from Down syndrome and pairing parents or a mom who has a Down syndrome diagnosis with their baby and they match that. 
And so um, we started our home study and um, started the process and became a waiting family with them about a year ago. So we are excited. Um, we're trusting in the timing and we're looking forward to it. I love it. What a beautiful, beautiful story. Now Ari is going to have a soul sister or yeah. a soul brother, boy yeah. or girl. So yeah, we actually are adopting specifically a girl because we imagine as they go, get older, Aria and her will, you know, probably live together and it'll just make things less complicated in our family dynamics. So adopting a girl with Down syndrome. Yeah. Very well thought out, Kirsten. <laughs> Very well thought out. If I was your mom, I'd say I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, no, it's true. Now let's go back. Um, Down syndrome affects everyone a little bit differently. How mm -hmm. does Down syndrome affect specifically Aria's health and development? Yeah. So we have definitely had some developmental delays, specifically when it comes to speech for her. So fine motor skills, um, physical therapy, that type of thing, she has always come very easily to her. Um, she kind of hit all those targets um, appropriately, but speech has been our major delay. So actually, as of yesterday, we had a communication device delivered um, that she is going to use and that's going to help her communicate with us. It kind of looks like an iPad has an app that helps her. She selects pictures and it says the words for her and her hearing those words over and over again will help her familiarize with them. And so that has been our her specific area that we've worked on the most. And honestly, it's been a really cool experience to learn how to communicate, have her learn communication with a child who is nonverbal and just realize how much we communicate beyond words. And it's honestly been a beautiful process, like I, something that I didn't expect. So I'm definitely excited for the day that she is robo, but I have learned a lot in this season with her as we've been navigating these speech delays. Um, the only other thing has been, you know, she has a lower immune system. And so we have had to put some extra precautions into place with just like sicknesses that come and go. Um, and so outside of that though, she is so healthy. She is so strong. She is the most confident little girl you will ever meet. She walks into a room and people know she's there. She just really has a strong, a beautiful presence. And so it's been wonderful to be her mom. Oh, well, her presence comes through on social media. I follow your page. Uh, I love her. I love her and I love you and I love your family. Now, what's the best way, if you could give advice, uh, the best way to encourage others who have a new diagnosis to Down syndrome? Yeah, I would say definitely have a lot of grace for yourself in the process of, you know, as you're navigating, accepting this diagnosis for your child. It's hard. I, I grieved. I, once I found out Aria's diagnosis, I had had one picture of what my child was going to be like. And when I got her diagnosis, in a sense, it felt like, okay, that child has died and now this is a new one. And there was grief associated with that. And so I tell parents, like, give yourself so much grace, feel the things. But I will tell you, once they place that child in your arms, all of that is going to fade away. You will see that child for who they are, not their diagnosis. And you will begin the most beautiful journey of just the most magical, unfiltered love. Like that is what people with Down syndrome have to offer. And there's so few of us that get to experience that. So you truly, when you get a child with Down syndrome, you win the lottery. And again, it takes some time to accept that, but that is the reality. And so every day we wake up and we feel like we won the lottery with her. And so I would just encourage parents to know that they won the lottery and, and to enjoy every second. And so to enjoy it. Well, wow. you know, I, my question was, what what was has this journey taught you? But clearly, you won the lottery, so oh. it taught you it taught you everything. Yeah, yeah, it has. It's now, what me. has been the hardest part? What's what's? I mean, it's not what you envisioned, yeah. right? But what yeah. is the hardest part? The hardest part is her medical complexities. She had open heart surgery when she was eight months old. She went into active heart failure four months prior to that, so we were in and out of hospitals. Um, the developmental delays. It doesn't impact or affect me. I've had pretty good laser focus when it comes to her. I don't compare her to other children, their milestones, what they're doing. I really just truly keep my eyes fixed on her and compare her to her. And so um, medical complexities has definitely been one of the harder things that we've had to navigate, as well as the education system. So I know you follow me on social media. I've been sharing a lot about that. 
um, and where we live currently, they don't necessarily practice inclusion in the classroom for kids with disabilities. And so we have been clawing and fighting our way through the system um, and have found a way for her to be in a class with typical peers where we believe she will learn so much, um, but also they will. They're going to learn a lot about going to school with a child that is slightly different from them and everything that she has to teach them. So those are the things that we're currently navigating and have been more difficult, but also empowering as her mom of, okay, I get to do this for her. And I believe I am competent enough to be able to pave a way for not only her, but other kids that come after her. Yeah. Wow. I mean, listen, you have such a, such a positive, uh, oh. healthy and balanced outlook that, that I think that's key. It's, it's your outlook. It's your perception, right? Perception is reality. And the way that you're navigating these emotions and applying logic to reason and, and, and truly balancing it all out, not just what's best for you, but what's best for your family and your ecosystem and the siblings. That's so important because it's one thing to be a mom and to have it all together. And it's another thing to be a mom, to be wise, to be competent, to be educated, to be selfless and to really do your research. Because I think that's, that's what it comes down to. You're educated in these areas. You know what the, what the downfalls are and you know what the upside is, but you're so honest with your emotions. And you give me so, when I read your posts mm -hmm. and I look at, you know, what your life is, which is an amazing, beautiful life that you work hard to get. I, feel the boost as a mom to see your joy as mom come through your your social media so it's great thank you that really means a lot to me i appreciate you saying that absolutely now last question <laughs> what is the biggest misconception about down syndrome oh the limits that people place on them as to what they're able to do um we've grown so much in this area specifically over the last 30 years but you have to remember 30 years ago kids with down syndrome were institutionalized and so we have come very far as a society, but we also have so far to go. Um, kids with Down syndrome are constantly just lifting the ceiling in terms of what they're able to do and proving that over and over again. And we as a society are just realizing we just give them the opportunity to do so. We need to give them the opportunity to prove it to us. And so my job as Aria's mom is to give her as many of those opportunities as I can um, and hold her hand through that journey, but also know she's completely capable. Um, and so that's, yeah, that's how it's been for us. I love it. Well, listen, we're out of time. Thank you so much for coming on. It was a pleasure chatting with you. And more importantly, thank you for everything that you're doing to really get the message out there about Down syndrome and being so transparent with your family. It goes a long way. Thank you, Zen. I really appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. That was the amazing Kirsten Chernek. You definitely have to check her out on the gram. She goes by at Kirsten Chernek, spelled K-I-R-S-T-I-N-C-Z-E-R-N-E-K. That was our millennial mom segment brought to you by OGPay.com. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. We'll be right back after this. A Moment of Zen is brought to you by Caldwell Soames Incorporated. Investing globally in transformative businesses like Original Digital Corporation or ODC, ODC develops advanced consumer and commercial fintech solutions such as OG Pay, which will transform the way you manage your money. From sending and receiving money globally for free, paying for goods and services in person and online, pay bills, buy and sell digital currencies, all while earning interest. OG Pay is easy to set up, FDIC insured, and your information is secured. Check out OGPay.com. Com.